Okay, um, you okay? Don't talk to me like I'm sick. It's not something that I'm embarrassed about, you know? I'm not the kind of girl who would go out with the first funny guy that crosses her path. It's, it's just so weird to see something like that happening. You probably kissed a guy or two before, though. Don't lie to me. Luce looks at me and tilts her head sideways for a moment, then dismissively shakes her head. She protects her convictions with pride, but probably because of the private nature of our conversation, her cheeks turn red and she tries to distract me before I can continue asking any more questions. Hey, hey, they're leaving! Let's follow them! I'm, I'm trying to be loud on the exclamation point. Wouldn't it be best to greet them and ask what, what they're up to? No way! We have to catch them red-handed! If after so many years they've said nothing, then they won't suddenly admit it. Don't give up, or do I have to remind you that you stalked me a while ago? So we're gonna stalk them in turn. <laughs> I knew you'd use that against me. Oh, they're at the mall. Keeping our distance, we follow our targets all the way to the shopping mall. It seems that Alpha and Charlie are heading underground. I repeat, Alpha and Charlie are heading underground, over. Roger that. The stairway to go underground is narrow, so we can't go together for this mission. Bravo. Deploy and make an inspection of the field first. Over. Roger. Deploying. Wait a second. Who's Bravo? You're Bravo. Me? What if I'm caught? You'll be remembered as the brave hero you were. <laughs> that explains Bravo. Makes sense. No! Oh. Uh, this Who's the question mark? I don't know. I have a feeling you want to be you want to be question mark then? I have a feeling it's Aussie, unless it's Hat Girl. Okay, go ahead. You be question mark then, because I don't know who it is. Who Doesn't knows. reveal the name. Um, who's gonna be who's question mark? Should I be? I'll do neutral. Okay. Don't worry, Bravo. I'll cover you. Finally, at least someone's going to. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, okay, it's Hat Girl. <laughs> I've been following you as always. Jeez, how long <laughs> were you following them? Oh, I'm really worried about that, as always, part, but this isn't the best time to talk about it. Because next time, next, Ausse is going to follow Tack Girl, who's going to follow, yeah, it's going to be a follow chain. Oh, oh, geez, he's here too. Exactly. We may lose the targets if we don't pay close attention to him. Let's hurry up. See, those when two. When did he get those here? Those two are probably following those two, or probably. In turn following the other two. And, of course, the last idiot is here too. Why didn't anyone tell me that the stupid parade's today, huh? I've been really worried about Ziva since this morning, so I've been following her. To think that Dinez was responsible, tell me something, Campanera. How many years is a murder sentence? The only person you'll kill at this rate is me. Can we leave the chit-chat for later? We're losing them! We raise our heads in unison like a mob of meerkats. Unable to see either <laughs> Charlie or Alpha, we all come out of our hiding place at the same time and make our way down to the lower level using the escalators. The atmosphere gets stuffier and our visibility decreases to only the neon lights of the arcade. My memories of this place as a child had it pegged as a paradise, a place where I could spend hours wasting money on racing and fighting games. Now, however, there are, are pool tables and TVs with soccer matches on them that take up the most space. Only a few survivors from my time still remain here, most of them with signs stating that they're out of order. No one ever actually planning on reviving them. Nostalgia hits me when I realize that the world still evolves even when I look away. But aren't I also partially guilty for forgetting about this place too? I can see them. They walk past the bar counter. Is that the loudest Claire voice? Yeah, I mean, I can do louder. <laughs> Why? You want me to try to do louder? I can see them. <laughs> They're heading past the bar counter. Yay. <laughs> oh no, oh. following. Go back. I didn't read I the block of text. Me. Sorry. Um, can you go back? I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll. Go right. No, oh. go back. No, go back. Right there. Following Claire's lead, we approach a counter located near the end of the room. It's used as both a lounge bar as well as a customer service desk in any in case of any in case any of the arcade machines start malfunctioning. Go ahead. 
Our targets went past that area and now and are now hiding somewhere in the darkness behind some of the arcade machines in an even deeper corner of the arcade. Worried about making a false move, we all stand near the counter as if we're interested in checking out the selection of drinks while trying to covertly watch our targets. It's during this time that, from what we thought was an unoccupied counter, up pops a familiar looking man as he cleans a glass with a white cloth, a muscular build, not a single hair on his head. Bulky bartender. That looks like the cop, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no offense, I'm not stereotyping. I'm just saying it looks similar to the guy who's the cop. <laughs> the cop's a daytime job. The bartender's his nighttime job. Or maybe the bartender is his brother. Oh, that's true. Okay. Um, who should be bartender? Want something to drink. Oh, thanks. Uh, it's the bald officer. Aren't you supposed to be finding people? His serious expression together with his impressive build makes us recognize him instantly. It's the same officer that stopped us when we borrowed Luce's father's car to bring justice. He's wearing a really tight white shirt with a black bow tie, the kind you'd expect from a bartender in a movie. Hey boss, do you have a twin brother that works in law enforcement by any chance? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a very busy man, so if you wouldn't mind, what can I get for you? He might have gotten a new job. Don't you remember this guy, sir? You know, he was driving the other day. I said, what can I get for you? I think I can see the glass he's holding start to crack while he, his deep voice drills deep That's into angry. our bones, waking up even the most basic survival instincts in us. Let's just say that I'm scared... <laughs> so, I can't help but try to meet his ex expectations by sitting at the counter and trying not to look like I'm following anyone. I'm too scared I'm to do something. I don't know, it said something like that. I'm, oh, I'm too scared of what he'd do. Okay, go ahead. I'll take a whiskey on the rocks and don't be shy, okay? <laughs> Since when have you drank alcohol on an empty stomach, Campanero? Oh yeah, he's 19, I guess. Oh. Well, that's not... Well, I don't know if that's technically legal, though. 19? I don't know. He's going to be 20 be or something? There. Oh, yeah, depending on where they live. Mm. Oh, shut up. I'm trying to save your butts and save face. You don't want to attract any more attention to us, do you? If we make ourselves look like tough guys, then he won't want to keep serving us or meddle in our business. This way, we might be able to keep our targets under control. Do you understand? I exchange looks with Ozzy. Who nods, acknowledging my words. He takes a seat next to me, resting his elbow on the counter with strong conviction, making his request and see, seeming full of himself. Bring, bring me a gin and a tonic. But no gin, and don't be shy with it. <laughs> That's just a tonic, then. Appearances, CR. Appearances. You didn't understand anything. And you, miss? What? Me? Why me? The bartender suddenly stops cleaning, then puts his washcloth on his shoulder and carries the glasses closer to a sink than we c that we can't see under the counter. Silence accompanies the sound of the glass slipping into a million pieces. Yes, of course then. Water is fine. No, I mean carbonated water or whatever you want. Please don't kill me. The bartender is able to spread terror amongst us just by smiling and nodding, especially once we notice the next victim in line being overshadowed by him. The short girl, nothing compared to such a hum humongous monster, nervously shakes from the, th from the great expectations put on her request at the moment. I I'll have... Uh, uh, I, I want... I want... Pineapple juice! We all is... We all astonishedly look at Claire for ordering something that no one would ask for in a place like this. Wasn't the game supposed to be asking for healthier stuff than the previous order? It may have been because of the pressure in that moment, but I can't help but giggle at the absurdity of what Claire had said, attracting the attention of the people around me, including the bartender. Good thing that our friend here, the Man of Steel, decides to serve my drink with such strength that I swear I saw the whiskey jump up from... Few, jump up a few feet, causing me to forget about giggling as I see my life flash before my eyes. Oh, who's that? CR? Not now. I'm in a life or death situation, and we're supposed to be going incognito. The idea is to not attract any atten- Someone taps on my shoulder as they say my name, and of course, knowing my luck, it could only be Deniz and Ziva, both of them glaring at us with raised eyebrows. 
Incognito, don't tell me that you've been following us, Endy. No, no, no. Nothing like that, Diva. Who, who do you think we are? We were, were playing. Playing, of course. We came here to play video games at the arcade together. What else could it be? Are you serious? That's great. Oh, oh, I, I <laughs> forgot. I forgot I was this guy. <laughs> I forgot how he sounded. Mm -hmm. He sound lazy. Oh, Siva. It's obvious that they're lying. They got us. We exchanged looks and sighs as if we're admitting that we can only give up. For some reason, the idea of the four of us gathering is so ridiculous that we didn't even try to defend it. We already knew that Ziva was the core of our group, the leader, and without her, none of us would ever take the initiative. She, however, didn't seem to think that way, her face showing genuine sadness as we tell her the truth, sadness that she tries to hide under her always smiling facade. Did you think that I was on a date with Diz? Maybe. No way! The two of us met up to organize a couple of things for graduation. We aren't the main representatives from school for nothing. From each school. From each school for nothing. And we didn't want to bother you guys with every little problem that may arise. To be precise, she was feeding me all of the, her stupid plans that, well, you guys will seem... That, well, you guys will see them with your own eyes. Why did you come all the way out here instead of meeting at the school like usual? I get depressed if I spend too much time in the classroom, you know? It's not a bad idea to have fun while we were talking- while we talk about other things. This way is also easier to make it look like- to make it look like I'm listening when I'm distracted. You know how much Ziva rants, right? <laughs> it's better than watching you fall, fall asleep while I talk. At least here I can keep you awake. Let's forget about that stuff for now. Why don't all of us play together since we're here? Without even an ounce of irritation or disgust, on the contrary, keeping the usual coolness and keenness that characterizes her, Ziva proposes an offer that we can't refuse. You really don't mind that- you really don't mind what we did, Ziva? You aren't even a little bit annoyed that we doubted you? Your spirit di differentiates you from everyone else. It makes you a unique and priceless treasure that only few can enjoy n for nothing. I'm sorry, Ziva. I can't help but to hate that part of you. Ahem, sorry, but can you please pay up? Can someone, can someone please pay up? The rough voice of the bartender causes all of us to shiver, one that makes us scared for our lives. Taking the bull by the horns, I turn around and face him as he stands behind the counter. I look into his eyes while I pick up my glass of whiskey. Don't worry, boss. I'll ha I have everything under control. As I pay the bill. What? Why me? It's been a pleasure knowing you, buddy. I'll take the others somewhere safe. I trust you. The sound of liquid pouring catches the attention of the sacrifice, Aze, and I. I turn my eyes, only to discover that Claire is suddenly pouring her pineapple juice in with my whiskey. Don't be so cheeky. Pay your tap, CR. What are you doing? I was joking. I'll pay. I'll pay. It's not just the pineapple juice. The carbonated water, tonic, and even some snacks that came from who knows where. Claire pours all of them into my glass while my friends laugh. While they laugh, I watch as the color of my drink darkens, loose, losing its previous magnificent golden color, now filled with bubbles and some other weird foodstuffs, dissolving into my whiskey gumbo. Ew. Ew.